Welcome everyone, this is Pinnal and we are going to talk about performance in 60 seconds SQL trips, everybody must know. So the way it works, that the way it works, I think many of you attended my session yesterday. How many were you there yesterday? Oh, a lot of you. Okay, those who did not were here, that was the best session of this session, this event. Right. Oh, no, it was brand new content, it was amazing. So please talk to somebody and download the scripts, talk to them, get the information. It was really something I built it specifically for this event. It has never been presented before. It was not, it's not there online. Uh, it was the best content. So I'll still try to make it up. But today's content is also brand new. But yesterday's content, I was extremely proud because um, uh, that has everything you need to know where how you can get best out of your SQL Server without even touching it by just doing little things. So please talk to somebody who has attended yesterday's session and download everything you can get. Slide won't tell you because slides are one thing, right? I am the one who is not big of a slide person. Actually, this is so, let's start with the slides. Let's finish the slides and we'll talk about important stuff and fun stuff, okay? So, let me go on my slide. So, this is Pinal. I'm from SQLAuthority.com. Um, we will talk about three of the common observations. Uh, these are the three things. You can download the script from here. This is the URL. Uh, it will send some of the scripts immediately as soon as you sign up, which is for performance tuning and what, what I'm going to show you today. So you can go there and download it. With this, we are done with the slide deck. Yes, we are done for the day for the slides. For next one hour, we are going to spend on talking fun demos. And as you know, yesterday, we are going to talk together. I am not the one who is going to fill up the next hour. I don't have that kind of capability. You guys have to fill that up half of the time. And I want your feedback, and you will drive this session. It's not me. I cannot drive this session. I know everything what I'm going to present. So it's you how to drive the session. So with this, I'm going to count again 1 to 10, and I will take off the scripts. I hope everybody write it down. So counting 1 to 10. Now 1. Two, ten. Good. Let's start. Ten. No, that's how we count. What do you thought? No. Okay, good job. Okay, we're done with this thing. Slides out of the way. Here we are. Oh, remember yesterday we talked about this one, right? So let's set a tone. How, how will you guys talk to me? So I will be running this thing and you guys have to answer me. So let's start. When I run this thing, what will be the answer? Say it again. Oh, you can go to my blog and it's not there. As I said, in the session, every content is unique. What will be the answer of this? Anybody who will run this and give an answer, don't do that. What will be the answer when I run this? Oh, good job. One, fantastic. What will be the answer when I run this? Two. All right. What about this? Wow, smart people. What about this now? How many for error? How many think other answer? Error. Absolutely, you guys are all wrong. <laughs> I know it's advanced questions, as I said. What about this? Very good. Why not? I mean, one. You never seen this? I know it's advanced little. Yes. This, why do I do this thing first thing of the day? Because it helps me to set a tone with you guys. I know at what level I need to present. Now? Sure? How many for one? How many for error? You know why it's the answer is one? Okay, I'll tell you it's very, very simple. So I would ask you this, okay? So what is the four divided by four? Good job. What will be zero divided by zero? Right? What will be one divided by one? One. So look at this. Zero divided by zero. 
So that is 1. So 1 divided by 1 is 1. Here you go. It's mathematically proved. <laughs> Didn't you learn in your school? OK. I, I, I was taught this. So I'll do one more. What will be the answer of this one? How many for error? How many for one? How many did not raise the hand? <laughs> Poor people, all of you null guys. This is the problem with database guys. I don't like it. You know, bit filled? Like you have a bit fill, right? Like, oh, are you present or not? Yes, no, and null. <laughs> so DBAs, stay away from the null is not good for performance. OK. Error. Yes, so now I will ask you a very simple question. When you pass a null, it's going to give you error. When you pass this thing, null divided by null, what will be the answer? How many for error? This is the last question, then after we'll talk. So how many for error? Properly. Good job. Pick a side, OK? How many for one? How many for other answer? Error. Good job. OK, and what about this? I know. It always happens. Always, always. I, all right then, enough, enough of it. This helped me out to understand now at what level I need to present. Extremely advanced. All right, so let's start with the very first demonstration. I want to talk about performance tuning. What would you guys like to see? I have a lot of plenty of demos, and you guys will drive. You guys are my customer. Let's play the same thing what we did yesterday. You guys will drive it. I'll give you a set of the options. You just raise the hand, and if you say yes, I will present that thing, OK? How many want to see the server configurations where you are developer or DBA, you just do that, and automatically, your SQL Server will start running faster. All right, few of them. Good job. How many of you want to learn about indexes, like how indexes really impact the performance of the in, uh, query? All right, half of you. Good job. Good. How many want to see a critical mistake which developers do all the time, but DBAs are not able to catch it? <sighs> this doesn't help. You guys are raising hand in everything. We never make mistakes. Uh, oh, yeah, fantastic. Good job. So I think uh, I'm not going to ask you anything. I figured it out. You're going to guess raise hand in everything. Um, but I need to pick my battle. So what I'm going to do, out of these three things, I'm going to show all of you, all of them. All right, let's start with the very first thing. I want to talk about this is a very simple demonstration. It's going to be one minute demonstration. And I'm not going to, it's, many of you might have seen it. Every year I do this one minute thing only to set a tone between you guys and me guys. It's setting a language between us. How we will be seeing the demonstration, okay? So those who have seen this demonstration, don't worry about it. We, it's just one minute of torture for you guys. For the rest of you, let's start. Okay, so I um, have just um, created two databases. And one of them, oh, let me see if it's there already. If they're there, I will drop. It's not there. Good job. What I'm going to do is I am going to create two databases. Create database, this one and two. After that, I am going to set two of the settings uh, in particular state. So one of them is the one of the most popular setting called auto-create statistics and auto-update statistics. For one database, I'm going to leave it on. And for second database, I'm going to leave it off. All right? So this is what I did. For one, it's on. For second one, it's off. And I'm not going to tease you right now this, because I will start asking you question from the next one. So now, what I'm going to do is this. But guys, by the way, this entire session is recorded, and you would be able to see it afterwards. So feel free to take as much photograph you want to take it, but you would have this session. Uh, in your feed. So just rest assured that you don't have to worry about certain things missing also. So just, just want to be very, very clear. So that way you guys don't have, like, you know, when we go to travel, right, people take more photographs than actually the thing which they have to see. 
we see more things in a camera lens than naked eyes. I think it's funny. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> I want this time to pay attention here. So what I'm going to do is now in this database, I am creating a table, cluster index, and non-cluster index. So identically two structures of database because I created two database. If you did not understand, whoa, what happened? Oh no, very very bad. I should have selected everything. Oh, good job, done. Now, I am going to populate this database with some data. If you not understand what I'm doing, don't worry about it. I'm going to repeat it in a second. Good. So here is the real thing which I want to talk to you guys. What did I do? I created identical two databases, database one and database two. On database one, I left two settings on, which is auto create and auto update. On database two, I've turned this one off. Now, I'm going to run a very simple query. And after we run the query, we will see the output of it. It's one of the classic thing. But I promise you, in your system, if you go in your production system right now, half of the database which you have migrated from the previous version of the SQL Server, this setting would be off. And if you talk to your DBA who has turned it off, he has a very solid argument, which is absolutely incorrect. So we'll see that in a second. Let me just show you this first, the outcome of this one. One has a statistics on, and another one has statistic off. When I run this together, let's see what happens. Query is going to give us exactly identical same results. But when I go to execution plan and see it, let's see what happens. Can you guys see all the way back the execution plan? Now? Good. So look at the query number one has 37% and query number two has 63%. This query is way more expensive than this query. Remember, both the query has identical indexes. Both the query has absolutely same database structure. Both the query has same data in it. But the query on the top is performing amazingly fine. Only reason because I left the statistics on. For any optimization to take place, it is extremely critical that your database has these two settings on. Now people will ask me set of the question. I will, instead of you guys ask me, I'll ask very soon. So hold on for that. But before that, I want to show you one thing which I like to call a yellow bank. Do you guys see this here? Yes. I don't know what that is. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do mouse over and we'll read it and see what it is. Warning, column with no statistics, first name. That's the problem. This query is running extremely slow because the statistics here are not there. So one of the things I want you guys to go home and do it, first thing first, this is extremely critical for your SQL Server performance, is to make sure your server has auto update and auto create statistics on. If they are not there, don't even talk about performance with anybody. And I will show you which settings I'm going to talk about. So I go to properties of the database, go to options. This is what annoys me. I want you guys to do a small experiment at home. Go to SQL Server, right click on database and go to option. If you have a SQL Server right now, go and do that. You will find this particular scroll bar is always in middle. I have no idea. From SQL Server 2000 till, till today, this scroll bar is always in middle. I don't know why. I never understood. I can promise you it happens to your system too. I think Microsoft has deliberately did this thing. I have no idea why. I think they want us to waste one click and some scrolling. That's why they have done it. Try this one on your computer. It doesn't matter what version of SQL Server Management Studio you have. This is always in the middle. It annoys me because no matter what they do, they want always in the middle. Any reason? Why you would have this anywhere in a SQL Server Management Studio, it will be always on the top. This is the only time it is always in the middle. I have no clue. And I think they don't want to, us to see these two settings. So if they are false in your system, 
your performance is bad. Always. Guaranteed. There is an argument why you should be leaving it off. Whoever argues that, don't talk to them next time. Then, yes, so this should be true. That is what I believe for modern database system. If you are using SQL Server 2000 or 2007, you know what? Let's not talk about performance. If you leave it on or off, I don't care, actually. It's just dead anyway. So that's how it is. So yes, these are the two settings. So why I like to say the SQL in 60 seconds? Because this you can do not even in 60 seconds. So this morning, I woke up at 4 AM. Customer calls me up. They just upgraded the database again. And I was like, yes, I know exactly that set of six problems. They said, Pinal, you taught us the six problems, but our system is running slow. Can you do the sixth thing again at 4 AM? It took me less than five minutes to change all the five settings, and their SQL Server performance was on. I wrote an email to them, which I had written three months ago. I said, please make sure when you create the new database, these are the six things you need to set it this way. And one of them is this. One of them is this. They, they have a senior DBA who always go and turn it off. He has a very solid argument, which is absolutely true 30 years ago. <laughs> His point is very valid. I need to leave it on, off because during the daytime, if the data is loaded into database, during that time, SQL Server will update the statistics and would be very, very expensive. He's absolutely true if you have two megabytes of RAM and four gigabytes big, your hard drive. This is true. It used to happen. But if you have a modern hard drives, which people have it nowadays, even in your phone or any of your machine which you guys are using, or you have a little bit more than one gigabyte of RAM, don't worry about all this thing. To update the statistics, it happens behind the scene. Second thing, updating statistics will do scanning of your table only once. If your table is huge, it will not even read the entire table and will do partial scan. This is absolutely harmless. So any database, I, when I go for performance tuning, if the senior DBA insists on keeping these two settings off, I do not take consulting project. I don't refund the money as well. <laughs> no, seriously. But none of the optimization I put it in are going to work. These two settings are heart of your SQL Server performance. You leave this one off, and everything which I'm going to go talk now and for the rest of the session, not going to be applicable at all. None of the indexes you create ever will be used by your queries. If you ever face a situation where you create an index and not used by query, you must go and check these two settings. That is quite possible. Either the settings are not up to date, or there is a, you have manually, manually have to update the statistics. This can be only two things. All right, now we set the tone and conversation. Now we are gonna have fun, okay? So let's start with the very first thing which I wanted to show you. This was the first thing already, but yeah, let's uh, see something more fun. All right, this is another thing which is very, very favorite of mine. I'm going to show you. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to create a database on E Drive. So I have E Drive. I'm going to create a database uh, there. It will take some time, but database will be created. After database is created, I'm going to show you something really, really fun. Okay, database is done. I'm creating a table in my E drive. If you guys are wondering what I'm going to show you, hold on to that thought. You know, this is like a movie of Night Shyamalan. For, forgot the name of the movie where the guy is dead all the time and he sees the dead people. Sixth Sense, yes, absolutely. Thank you for ruining for people who did not see, but yes. <laughs> so I did not say the name. You guys said Sixth Sense and I couldn't say no. So this is like that. Once you see the demo, you will understand what I'm going to show you. Demos are no longer than a minute. It's not like Night Simon's movie where you have to watch for two hours. We'll be done in a minute. So I just created a table in front of you in a database, and I'm going to insert around 100,000 rows. And let's see how long it takes to insert the 100,000 rows. Let's see. Um, do you guys want to see how long it takes to retrieve 100,000 rows? 
Let's see that first. How long it took? Zero seconds. Good job. Less than one second. All right. Now let's see how long it takes to insert the data. It won't take much. Ten seconds. All right then. All right, good. Data was huge, huge amount of the data. It took 10 seconds. That's fine. Is it fine? I think it's a lot, right? The data which takes a second, what is the issue with the system? Nothing, right? If you look at it, I just created a table, and there are no indexes or anything on this table at all. Still, it took around 10 seconds. There is a problem here. Do you know what would have happened during the 10 seconds actually behind the scene? I'll talk about that in a second. But meanwhile, what I'm going to do on the same drive, I'm going to create another database. So let the database be created. And I want to talk about it. One thing about where did default, yeah. So when I selected the data, when I selected data, can anybody guess how much data I might have selected? Let me show you by one thing. So. And now let me just run the select. How much data I have selected? Anybody want to guess? What is this? Pages. Page data read from SQL Server. What is the size of page? What is 31 into 8? 248. So data which I selected was 248K. Is it big? Is it a lot? It is a smaller than a photograph you guys take it from your phone. Way smaller. Each photograph which you are taking right now is around anywhere between 4 to 5 megabytes. This is nothing. Inserting this data, how long it took? 10 seconds. How many CPUs and processors and everything I have on my system? I have 8 CPUs, logical processors. I have 16 gigabyte of RAM. No. 8. Where is 16? Yeah, it, is, it says 16. Yeah, I forgot. I keep on forgetting. Yeah. 8 available. I have very, very fast drives. And still, this is the situation. Now, let me show you something else. Once again, I created a second database on the same drive. I created a table. Again, inserting the same amount of the data. Let's see how long it takes. How much time it took previous time? Yes. So this time, when I run the same thing, it will take around, let's see how much. How much improvement I got? 4 divided by 10. No, other way. Yeah, 2.5 times. This query run just in front of you way more faster than it ran before. What did it change from the previous one to this one? I'll show you this. So this kind of little, little, little settings in your SQL Server makes way bigger deal than you guys think. So let me show you this. A file growth. Where this setting is, let me just show you this. Oh, I hate this about Microsoft. This called SQL Server. Oh. <laughs> yes. Good job. Let's go to Optimize DB, go to Properties, Files. This is the setting which I'm talking about, file growth. Right now, it is set to 100 megabyte. I want you to go and do this thing for your system. 
one thing. Go and check what's your file growth. If your file growth is very, very little, you will see performance problem without doing anything. All your insert update deletes are going to be delayed. Your system is going to continuously struggle. Let me show you the file growth right now. It's a 100 megabyte. But for our other database, right? let me just go and see default DB and see what it is. Files, one megabyte. Do you know what was actually happening right now? Let me explain you in the simplest possible word. How many of you has ever faced in your situation something called query timeouts? Good. How many times you have locks going on? OK, good. How many times you have found your queries, which is running fast, and suddenly it is running slower, and by the time you try to figure out what is going on, your query is once again running faster? Happen ever to you? How many times at that time you went and checked this setting? Never? How many for never? Good job, at least. So this is what you guys need to go and check it. Do you know what actually happens? Let me explain you in a simple word. After that, I have a more advanced demo. But before that, I want to talk about this for a second. Can you delete a file in Microsoft operating system? which is open, like you are editing an Excel file. Can you, can you even delete that file if it is open? No. Why not? Yeah, what is it? It is a lock on it, right? Who is putting a lock on it? Windows, right? You have opened the file. Windows put a lock, so you cannot delete it. This is what works. Can you delete a SQL Server file when SQL Server is running? MDF or LDF? No. Do you know why? Because SQL Server has left it open. That's why Windows has absolutely no access to it. Now, when you create a one megabyte big file, and at that point of time, when you create a one megabyte of file, at that point of time, you need a more space. How is SQL Server going to get more space? SQL Server has, is just a Windows running. A lot of people think Microsoft made SQL Server. So SQL Server is some internal handshake with operating system. Absolutely no. SQL Server is just an application like your Notepad. SQL Server is just an application like your Fetch Viewer or Paint. They access the data absolutely with the same APIs, Windows 32-bit and 64-bit. So if SQL Server needs to grow that file by one megabyte, do you know what it has to do? It has to go and request Windows. So Windows, increase the file by one megabyte. Windows will say, sure, I will increase the file by one megabyte. First, give me access. SQL Server said, oh, hold on. Let me put a lock on entire database. It will lock the entire database. All the processors will be hold. Everything unlocked. Then it gives to Windows. Windows, now increase by one megabyte. Oh, that's easy. I'll give you one megabyte somewhere in my drive. It give one megabyte. Then access is back to SQL Server. When SQL Server gets the access back, said, oh, yeah, good. Everybody start running now. As soon as it start running, do you know what happens? One megabyte fills up. So, oh, now what to do? Windows, increase the file. Happens so many times, you would not believe in this case. In this case, to just insert such a little data, SQL Server has taken extra six seconds. And how many operations were running on my system? One. How big was the data? Little. If you are running on a production system, I challenge you. The query which I have showed you, which was running like this, four seconds, would have easily taken 40 seconds. And you guys were like, oh, yeah. Sir, what are you doing? It's pointing in my eyes. Sir, yes, it's coming like on my eyes. I couldn't see. So initially, I was worried because I watch a lot of Hollywood movies. <laughs> you know Red Dot? That's not good. I was like, uh oh. <laughs> but then I just decided to request you. Thank you. Yeah, it was like, oh, 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 continuously. Good job. Thank you, though. Yeah. Anyway, I lost the track of it because it was continuously coming in my eyes. Well, good one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so exactly. Now it's coming in his eyes. Yeah. Guys, just so you know, this is recorded. You guys will have access to it, too. So don't worry about it. Yeah. See this guy? This, um, uh, she's recording. Yeah. 
Okay, coming to the point. So you can see everything you can run. So yeah, guys, you understand the problem here? This would happen multiple times. And that is why I strongly recommend you go and fix this. So you know, what should be the setting of this one? Whatever is your weekly file growth. If you don't know what is your weekly file growth, then what would you keep? At least keep 100. At least keep 100. The reason is that, so your SQL server will be locking 100 times less. All right, enough talked about it. Now, and look at that. This is the problem. How many were people were here yesterday when I tell you story about my wife? She just write to me, good morning, where are you? And I was like, uh, yeah, please raise hand. It's the same kind of people. Uh, let me. She has a problem. When I'm not at home, every hour I must write to her and send a photograph of what I'm doing. Crazy. She completely trust me. One time I sent her photos, she was sitting in a corner. Four years ago when I got her, and I was like, whoa, why did you do? Okay, so let's see uh, another interesting demonstration. Uh, this is my favorite one about, let's see how much time we have. We are a little bit ahead of our time. I want to show you about implicit conversion. It's a beautiful demonstration. This is my favorite one. This is what developer does it. So let's talk about this. Then after I will go to um, indexing one, which is also very much fun. And my favorite demonstration of this entire event is not yet done. So guys, let's start with this one. I want to show you something simple, very, very simple, very, very fun. And then we will talk about it. So uh, I am actually creating a table, a very, very simple table, which I'm creating right now. And I have certain columns I'm creating right now over here. So, so this are really created. Uh, I'm just creating it and populating with the data. Now I will show you what data I have in my table. It's just random data, which you can see right now in front of you. And I will be creating index on two column. One of the column is reference number. If you don't know how indexing work, don't worry about it. Now, if I run this query, I want you guys to tell me which query will run faster. What do you guys think? Don't ask me question back. How many people think the first query will run faster? How many of you think the second query? Oh, even she is participating and raising hand for the first one. Thank you. Oh, you're not participating? Oh, OK. I thought you raised the hand as soon as I asked. So that's uh, you look good. I thought I, yeah, I taught her. I mean, good job. I mean, next time she would present here. So how many of you think the second query will be faster? Second? All right. So how, why do you guys who raise the time first query, why did you guys raise hand on the first one? Why do you guys think this query will run faster? What were you doing when I was showing it? No, I did not go fast. Actually, if you go and see the recording, I had a circle around and made a big line right below the reference number. And I used the word, please pay attention here. I actually underlined it. <laughs> Go and recording and uh, she, will, yeah, she will definitely validate that. And you guys will get this after a month and see this thing. When you see this thing, you would laugh. I was extremely clear and Chris knows this thing. He was paying attention. Thank you for not saying anything. And he would, uh, like he said, I will not say anything. My name is not Chris, I'm Andrew. I'm like, oh, okay, good job. <laughs> no, he's a very good guy. So guys, let's see. How many of you said second one is faster? Why did you guys think second is faster? Why? Oh, you thought it's a trick question. So whatever I say, you give a wrong answer. <laughs> That's not the case. I am not the one who like to trick you guys. What do I get out of it? I go home and tell my wife, 112. She said, all right, now today's, after tricking this 112 people, our score is 10,000 total. <laughs> I don't get any reward from her. For, so let's see the answer. And you guys were all right. The query on the top did very, very bad. Query on the bottom, it did amazingly well. What is the reason for it? Very, very simple. When I mouse over this one, it tells me there is a problem with implicit conversion. This happens every single time in your system. Every single time. We as a developer, do this kind of thing in every single join, 
every single wear condition and as a DBA, we do not point it out to developers. Who is at fault? Nobody. Developer doesn't know this thing because they don't have to know this thing. DBA who know this thing has no idea how the questions and, and, and the columns and things are placed, so they let it go. Look at what happens when the implicit conversion happens. Your SQL server is scanning the entire table instead of doing seek. Seek is better in this case, not every case in this case. Let me show you one more thing. What happened with the reference number? So let me answer your question. Sir, I hope this time you will pay attention. <laughs> I actually created this and I did this. <laughs> war card. That was the problem. What did happen actually when this was a war card? When this was a war card, this is integer. They don't compare with each other. There is implicit conversion happen for this entire column. So this entire column was actually converted to int. And then after, it was compared with this one. Entire. And that is why it takes a lot of work. Now, let me give you a simple puzzle. Let's see if you know the answer of it. If I'm only going to store integer in this one, what would, should be a best practice? Should I leave it varkar or should I change it to anything? All right, so let me change it to integer. So now, reference number is going to be integer. And I dropped the index, I recreated it. Now I will ask you a simple question. Remember, previously this was an varkar. Now this is an integer, and this is also an integer, but this is varkar. Which query will work faster now? Easy question. How many of you think the first query will work faster? Come on. <laughs> All right, so what is your answer beside that excellent sound? No, which one? Pick one. You cannot come to my home and I say, do you want tea or coffee? I don't want you here to say yes. <laughs> no, if you have ever served, I was, when I was beginning my career, I work in a cafe 84 in University of Southern California. One of our tasks was, I was um, to offer people the, I, I was making juices, okay, jamba juices. And it was interesting, like I said, people, do you want this protein powder, powder booster, this, one, two, three, and the person will look at it and say, yes. <laughs> I was like, come on, which one? Which you just said? Like, I said six things. Uh, can you repeat it? Uh, uh, it's hard. So, pick one. How many of you think the first one? Ramon, last time. Good job. How many of you think the second one? No, you have to pick one. If you don't raise hand, you are second one, I'm going to assume. Guys, this was not a trick question. Those who said first, I love this suspense. I love you guys. Fantastic. You guys are right. Those who say it second, you guys are right too. See, I want you guys to walk away happy. So there you go. Do you guys know why this happened? What happened? I thought the first one will be faster. Why he didn't do that before? What he said is very interesting. I'm repeating for the people who are going to watch recording. I forgot what you said, but yes. So anyway, the point, point here is that, hey, this is very, very, I mean, I'm very nervous right now. I don't, I think my demo failed. No. No, no, my demo never fails. All right, so coming back to this one, I practice it so hard. I will tell you this. This is the beauty of the SQL Server. I want to, I want to give you homework, okay? That's called data type precedence. I want you guys to go and look up data type precedent in SQL Server. I want to actually connect to the internet and want to show you this, but I'm always worried as soon as I connect to internet, what will pop up on my screen? <laughs> yeah, last time, my wife was like, Oh, well, I am going to do, do, uh, all right, look at that. That's the problem. 
welcome back good job i am there and instead of showing anything in a browser i'm going to show you in a sql browser a safest way to show you anything so there is something called data type precedence and it will show you there are 30 different type of data types and the way the sql server works is that this is how it works and i want you guys to look into it look at this where is our integer 16 where is our varchar i lost it varchar is not even there it's not a real data type no it is there 27 sorry yeah i was just trying to say it I thought they removed it. You never know. Microsoft never removes anything. They are lazy as me, like me. So look at the 16, and this is 27. So when there are two different data types is being compared, like integer is compared to varchar, always varchar has to be converted to integer. Always. Anything which is lower in a precedence order will be converted to the top one. That's how it is. So even though you're comparing text with integer or text with varchar, varchar will be compared to the text. One of my customer has a hard time. They have one thing, which is a text in entire table. I keep on telling them that that thing, anytime you use in your query, is going to bring your entire system down. Because they had a varchar in text in the system, in a, one of the column. Whenever that is there in a where condition, and they search anything, that entire thing was a big problem because now look at this, varchar is here, but a text is here, and if you search for integer into the big text field, everything has to be converted. Entire text field has to be converted and compared. This is a big mess thing happens. So please make sure when you use joins or where conditions, they match the data type. If they don't match data type, never talk about performance. Performance, yes, sir. Correct. So, very good point. His question is that what happens if I cast it? If you cast it, great point. If you cast it, that becomes explicit conversion. Instead of implicit, now you are doing it. The troublemaker is no longer SQL Server, it's you. So you want to take a blame or let SQL Server take a blame? I'll let you decide, right? <laughs> but great question. So that is what it is. So I strongly suggest, let me just reset this uh, entire one. And I want to give you a very, very simple script right now. I want to give you a very simple script. Let me just show you this very quickly. Now, if you guys remember this query, when I was running it, was doing conversion, right? Implicit conversion. Oh, oh, hold on. Here, here it is. Let me run it 100 times. So this is happening 100 times. And this is the query, which is available at sqlauthority.com. When you run this with the right database context, it will tell you, this is the name of the database. This is the query. It has wasted so much of my CPU, so much of my, it, it has wasted so much of my time, how much logical read has happened, and how many times the query has ran, and what's the execution plan. In a real world, you would see, when you run this query, in real world, when you run this query, where did my implicit conversion go? Let me run it again. In real world, when you run this query, you would find way more rows than you can see right now because this is a test system. It's only going to show you one. It will bring out anything in a cache. Remember yesterday, those who were here, I told you three things which I asked to my customer. Question number one, if I, see, in my consultation, I give a 100% guarantee, I refund 100% money if I don't fix their system's performance. How do I give a guarantee? I ask three questions. Anybody remember what are the three questions if they wrote it, down, wrote it down? Question number one was, how many indexes do you have on your business center table? 
Question number two, do you use index hint or any kind of hint for your query? We went on that detail. And what was the most important question number three? Would you pay by credit card or debit card, right? So if answer of three is yes, then first two I will read. I read it descending order, yeah? So coming to the point, sometimes people always say, how do we know? How do we proactively stop our queries, right? You run this query. I want to challenge you this. I want you to run this query in your production system. It is very, very lightweight. Nothing is going to happen. Only thing is that, make sure you do not have any issue with the heart or blood pressure when you run this. You would see so many queries running continuously slow because they are doing implicit conversion. They're bad for your system. All right then, reach to a final point. Yes, sir. Uh, different size Varkar column, answer is no. But Varkar max, when you use it sometime, it takes way more memory than you want. Eventually, it will do TEMDB spill. So be very careful when you are joining Varkar max column. If you are using entity framework, somebody can save you, not me. Okay. Because everything is Varkar max in it if you don't properly type with entity framework. All right, so I am coming to the very interesting demo of the indexes because you guys wanted to see about indexes. So I'm going to show you this. This is going to be a fun one. Um, let me see if I have enough time first. How much time we have? We have exactly 17 minutes. How much? I, I, I would definitely want to finish it early. The reason is safe because the coffee, uh, there is a big line. We'll definitely finish in 20 minutes, guys. Don't worry, we are ahead of the time. You guys have been an amazing sport. So let's start with this one. I want to show you about indexing. And then after, I will show you the best possible demo of my indexing. This is, of course, going to be fun. But please make sure who has been here today, please take everything from the guy who was attended yesterday, because that was some really neat content. But this one is also equally good. So now, I'm creating a table. And I am going to insert 1 million record into this table. I just created a table, OK? And one million table, one million row I'm going to insert. Let's see how long, first of all, this query takes to retrieve one million records. Let's see. It took around six seconds. Now, when I run this query, OK, and insert that, Let me just run this one also for, for fun. OK, now, when I insert the data, which took six seconds, and insert into this table, will it take more time or less time for this query to execute? How many are there for saying more time? <coughs> Raise proper hand. It's OK. Good. How many of you think it will take less time? Come on, this does not add up to 200, which you guys are here. Let's do one more. You have to pick one side, and it's OK to be wrong now. Don't be wrong tomorrow when you go on your production system, or, then go, or don't get caught. <laughs> the query is taking six seconds. If I insert this much data into this table, will it take more time or less? How many for more? Good job. How many for less? <sighs> Let's see who is right. One, two. Go. Windows. Oh, yeah, it definitely took more time. <laughs> Did it take more time or less? less? Then what? why were you saying more? You guys, uh, do you think it's advanced query? Very, very advanced query? No? Let me tell you, those who said it will take more time, all of you are right. Those who said it will take less time, all of you are wrong. And that's true. It's, I'm not making fun of you. What is the point of making fun of you? That's truth, actually. You guys don't believe me? No? All right, let's try. You think I'm making fun of you guys right now, investing your time with saying the truth? OK, so everybody who said it will take more time, I'm going to prove this query actually took more time. 
How do you measure the time actually? Let's talk about that. No, I agree. So let's check which time is important. How do you decide the time actually? You should never, see this is a big problem when I do for performance tuning consultation. I have a hard time explaining my customer this one terminology. Once I explain this terminology, my life sometimes gets easier or I get fired. I don't know. So let me try this time. People don't want to understand simple thing. When you don't want to understand and you want to say, I want to remain stupid, nobody can help you. Right? So let's see this one. This query, actually look at the two important metrics here. CPU time. How much CPU time this query took? Second and half. Very good. 1500 millisecond. How much time total it took? 1700 millisecond. Good job. Fine. This was time for my insert, correct? If I just run select, let's see what happens. You guys remember, right? Second and half. Look, this query is still running, still running, still running. How much CPU time it took? How much it is from the previous one? Half, correct? How much time it took here? Where is the difference of delta came actually from? Rendering data on the screen. SQL Server Management Studio is one of the worst product to retrieve a million records. What are you going to do with that million records? I mean, do you think you can retrieve those million records and going to search something manually there? Why would you retrieve a million record in SQL Server Management Studio unless you just want to torture your local machine? I mean, I don't see any reason. Matter of the fact, the query was actually done in a less than half second or almost half second or 800 sec millisecond. So those who said the query actually took more time, yes, query was done actually. In this case, 800 millisecond and a second time it took 1500 millisecond. Rest of the time, it was just Data was handed over to SQL Server Management Studio, and the poor coding of SQL Server Management Studio re rendered the one row at a time. That's why it took so long time. It's not your SQL Server's problem. It was done. That's why it's very, very critical. Like, I see people retrieving thousands of records in a SQL Server Management Studio or in your application, and they said, I want to hand over to my application. My question is that, are you a greatest possible programmer who can just take a million records in your application and order it and display? If your answer is yes, you are wrong. Now let's look at that. So yes, I, I, when I go for performance tuning, I always tell people, don't waste your time on the very, this one, elapsed time. This is not what is gonna to actually help you to tune your query. The real, real metrics, the query tuning metrics, if I tune my query or not, can be only measured by two important metrics. One of them is logical read, and second one is CPU time. This can keep on changing. If you are a very older machine, super old machine, this would take even 1500 or even, even three minutes. But your CPU time will be always the same. This is based on your client. All right then. I hope you guys are tuning query like this, right? No? Yes? No? How many use CPU time for tuning your query? Well, good job, at least three people. Three out of one, 200 is a great number. Last time there was zero hand. Now, if I create a 10 index on this table, 10 indexes, what do you guys think how long this query will take? Same query, I just created 10 index. Any guesses? This question was asked to me 12 years ago when I joined Microsoft in interview. I was passed, I stayed there two years, and then I quit and become independent consultant because I wanted to make more money. No, seriously. When you're an independent consultant, people pay you more because they go to Microsoft and then they come to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mostly, most of my customers go there first. I always tell them, go there. Once they cannot fix it. Yeah, it's fun that way, right? Who want to solve the easy problem? Okay. Question was, 
how long this query will take? The previously this query took to insert the data one second, right? Elapsed time one second, CPU time 1.5 second. How long this query will take? Any guesses? 10 indexes on it. Four seconds? Good job. I love your guessing skills. You, you should go and play nothing, yeah? <laughs> I don't want to encourage any bad habits. Anybody else? How many of people think it will take 10 seconds? 15 and more? 20 and more? 25 and more? None. Okay. I love what you guys are thinking. I love how you guys think. I want, I'm sure your company is very lucky. You are wrong, Mr. Four. Okay? So rest of the people, that's okay to be wrong, right? So that, that encourages you. You should never go and do things in Las Vegas. <laughs> Not mad for it. No, good job. Uh, yeah. 23 seconds, guys. Actually, but CPU time was around 1900 milliseconds. Every single index you create slows down your insert update delete by 100% minimum. So if you have 10 index on a table, you should definitely assume that you slow down your system by 100%. 10,000. I'm sure all of you doesn't have more than five indexes per table. If you have more than five, you have a bad performance. So this is what I ask, right? Second question of my business. A uh, first question, how many indexes you have on your business important table? If somebody says more than five, I can definitely help them. I just have to go and drop indexes and you get 200% performance improvement. Seriously, right there. Because indexes are so bad, they reduce performance of your query for insert, update, delete, and select. Yes, you have never seen it? Of index? What do you thought the whole point is? Yes, that was the point. How many of you agree with him? I'm not going to say your name, Andrew. How many people agree with him? That whole point of indexes is to speed up your query. How many people think that way? Yes? Don't say it depends. That's for the weak people. Raise proper hand. So what about the people who did not raise hand? I'm going to point finger now and going to ask you why you think other way. So who did not raise hand? Yes. <laughs> oh, cheating. Cheater. All right, we have a cheaters too. That's good. I love cheating. Cheating is allowed in when you are doing programming. <laughs> Who does not cheat? I cheat all the time. Like, right? We go on Google is actually original name. They would have created cheating.com. That was not available. They made google.com. <laughs> right? That's how it is. Copypaste.com. Those are the things they should have named. But I appreciate they didn't want it. So obvious thing. That's why it's called Google. Right? Otherwise, copy paste is a beautiful thing, and you should do it. I don't have any problem anybody taking my code, putting in the business anywhere. My code are at thousands of the places. I sometimes people said when they consulting come, hey Pinal, we took your code and we did not give you credit. Sorry about that. I always tell don't put my name because you know what? If the code is bad, you're gonna blame me. <laughs> no, put your name. It's okay. I don't care. Copy paste. Use my code anywhere you want. It's free. Because when you do something with my code, you think of me because you mess it up now. You want my consulting. That's how I make money. <laughs> I want everybody to modify my code and use it. So copy paste. Go ahead. I give you explicit permission on the video. OK, now let's look at this. So select. So, we, so first of all, do we agree on a first part right now that insert, update, and delete are definitely slowed down by select, uh, by creating index? That's what you agree, right? But the second part seems like you have a doubt. You thought entire your life that you create indexes to speed up your selects. How do you find, okay, so that's good. Now second question I'm asking has nothing to do with the first question, just so you guys know. 
how would you find if the entire life what you have been living for has no purpose? <laughs> how would you find that what you believe is true was absolutely wrong from the day one? All oh, right, which industry would you prefer, sir? I like that one because we, yeah, that's a good one. That requires also smartness. Yeah, good job. No, I actually, if I am not database guy, I would go stand up comedy. <laughs> uh, that would be good, yeah, that was fine. I have some jokes which I never used it. Uh, anyway, and, but I would run clean, that I promise you. Stand up comedy now has become very, very bad. People think using bad word or swearing bad thing is funny. I don't think so. It's much more detailed. Stand up is more important. It's, it, it, it is about being clean, making you laugh from the things which happens every day of our life. But people don't get that in a, a stand up. They just think saying bad word is funny. And people laugh at it too. Why would he not do that, right? So let's look at the indexes and select. I think it's a beautiful time. Uh, but I. Th <laughs> yeah. Hey. SQL Server is one of the most boring topic I ever took it. When I went on a SQL Server, everybody said, you're going to be the boring guy. And I said, I agree. Data, there cannot be not, there cannot be, let me step back and fit my uh, statements again. <laughs> there is nothing more boring than data, actually. This is the most boring subject. And performance tuning is more boring than you think. He's already yawning. <laughs> so guys, I'm going to show you something so much fun. This is my favorite demo, which I really prepared for this presentation only. We will try to do as much as we can do in the next 12 minutes. If we cannot do it, there is another session at 2.30 of mine, all right? So let's see how fast you help me. This is the beautiful demo, my favorite demo. And I'm going to show you something which is going to blow your mind. I am going to create a, I'm just going to run this query first. You are a consultant. You have to help me out. This is a real problem I'm putting in front of you. The solution of this is there in a less than 60 seconds. Let's see if you can solve it in a 60 seconds. Very simple. I actually was called in for one of the largest bank in Australia to solve this problem. They had a credit, credit and debit reports. Their credit reports, every, so how many times you get money in your account and how many times the money is withdraw? Do you have a more debits or more credits? Don't say it depends, that's not what I am looking for. More debits, right? You get one big chunk of money, but then you pay a little, little, little bills, right? Hundred dollar, two hundred, and then you get turned. So most of the time, the debits has more entry in most of the places. So this is actually true that every single bank account has more debits than actually credit. So debit reports were running extremely slow, and that's what they hired me. I went and fixed the debit report. I come back within a two months, they called me back to Australia to fix something, when I, <laughs> something they had happened. So because it was bank, they had to fly me all the way. They don't allow me to even have an internet or a phone inside, and I had a trouble. Without Google, how do I do things? <laughs> they won't understand. I had to use, I went out of the bank, downloaded the book online, who did that in recent year? And then I went back because I had to do F1 and look up the code. And the book online is not even available for 2017. So I actually had to download the book online for the previous version and keep on opening in a Notepad Plus. Seriously, I did that work that way. So look at that one. When you look at this query, what do you think is a troublemaker? Anybody want to point out two big troublemaker here? Yes, sir. Nested loop, very good. And cluster index, scan. How many of you agree these two are troublemaker? Hmm. You guys are smart. Do you know why you guys are answering this? Because you are looking at cost, right? You think higher the cost is bad? Yes? Where did you learn all this? No, seriously. All right, do you guys know that? Then I would tell you very, very honestly, execution plan lies. This is one of the biggest lie presented to us in front of us. Because we trust execution plan more than our common sense, that is why 
I think world is misguided in a performance training. I'm going to show you what you just said is actually not a problem at all. Let me run this query. Oh, it's going to run very fast, so I cannot show you. But if I run with live execution plan, oh, it runs very, very fast, so I cannot show you. Yeah, it's a, it's a challenge, actually. But anyway, if this query was taking way longer, I would have shown you with a live execution plan. The problem is not that. But I will try to show you other way. You guys think, when you look at execution plan, that the trouble is nested loop and trouble is cluster index scan. Good, because you think because of the higher cost. <sighs> totally wrong learning. OK, let me ask you this. What would you do for nested loop? How would you fix it? Just guess. How would you fix the nested loop? What would you do here? OK, fine. Great. Thank you for the suggestion. OK. <laughs> I am going to do one important thing and going to show you. So now, I want to show you something very, very critical. I'm going to create two indexes on it. Let's create the first index first, call index first try. I'm not going too much into deep in it, but I'm just going to create this index. But before that, I will show you the messages. Do you see the total logical reads are 3684 and 1246, right? Can anybody add them up very quickly? It's still almost near to this, right? Good. And I will create the first index called first try. Now, what is the logical reads? Very little. Now I will run the same query again. Oh, I made it worse. There is a first time scan on this one, first try. And now there is a second scan on first try. Previously, there was only one scan. Now I have two scans. Is it worse than before or not? You don't know. Let's go to messages and see it. What did this index do? It reduced those 300K reading, right? This query is so much faster. Now, I'll create a second index on this one. I like to call it a second try. What? Oh, yeah, you're right. One second, one second. I should have not done that. Thank you very much. Who corrected me? Oh, yeah, this is the drop. Let me drop this. Yeah, you're right. Actually, I should have not created. Um, I should have created index. Oh, here it is. Sorry. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. So this is what I want to create called second try index. I'm creating the second try index. Now, when I run the same query, please see what happens. Whoa, my execution plan got changed. I have, once again, single scan on table first try. Do you see anywhere my index second scan use, second try? No. Let's go on messages. Whoa, logical reads are back. This query is once again showing us poor performance. Look at the editor. OK, so I created second try index. Even though that's not being used in my query, it is giving me bad performance. To prove that, I will drop this index, second try. So dropping index, second try. And I will run the query again. Whoa, once again, two scan on first try. And look at the messages. I reduced that 300K reads. I will create the index second try again. 
run the same query, you can see the logical reads are back. In the execution plan, you will not see that table anywhere used, still without being used. That index is reducing this query's performance. And many others which you don't know. In your business, in your organization, there are so many indexes which you have created which are not even being used in your query are actually doing this. How many times you have seen this? How many indexes you have created which are just created even though they are not being used for your query, they reduce performance of your select. Now you go and give me query like this and say tune it, tune it, tune it. I cannot tune it. You cannot tune this. Nobody can tune this because the performance of this query is being handled, bottleneck and stopped by an index which you created behind the scene which is not even being used. Yes. Correct, but what would you do in this query? What I'm trying to tell you is that you are right. Balancing is an act. But are you first grasping my point number one? We, we are not talking about perfect world. We are talking about the first problem which you guys were absolutely not aware of it. You thought you create index and it helps your query performance? First of all, that was acts absolutely incorrect thought from the day one. Indexes hurt your select queries too. Extremely bad. But when they hurt, they hurt it such a way you even do not see them hurting you. Happens continuously in your business. Right now, only thing you just don't want to see it none other consultant or you have never explored it, you will not read this thing in any of the book because you know what? 99% of the people, because they do not know how to tune things like that, they don't want to address the elephant in the room. When you hire a consultant and you tell him that I, there is a select statement, it's running slow, he would be not able to tune your queries because he is absolutely not aware of either this phenomena most of the time he won't be because he's not smart. And I'll come to you. And there is a very, the query which we went very, very fast right now. What I'm going to do is that why this is happening? How do you overcome with it? Little bit more dissect and analysis of this query. Understanding what is there in index one and what is there in index two. Dropping index one and keeping running the query and dropping index two and running the query. How actually query works in terms of indexes and what you have never seen in a real world out, I'm going to cover today at 2.30. We will start from this particular point and I will show you in a detail by dissecting this query and will teach you which nobody will ever teach you because you know what? They don't know. They have never read the source code and that's the problem. A consultant will come to you and say, create index to improve performance of select. He, that guy, you should never talk again. You are just lowering yourself by talking to them. Yes, sir, what is your question? This is the last question of the day. After that, I will make the podium empty. And then we will talk more at 2.30. I'm going to have the same demonstration. And I will discuss in depth with you, everybody else, who want a script of performance tuning, you can take it from there. If you don't attend at 2.30, you will make the biggest mistake of your career. That's fine for me.